Hello everyone, welcome here. My name is Oshina. I am so excited to share all of my favorite Christian romance authors. And how I decided to make this list is I'm only sharing authors where I've read multiple of their books, at least two or more and at least two or more have been five stars. I have read several Christian romance authors where one book is five stars and an all-time favorite, but it's not a favorite author because I didn't like the rest of their books for some reason. So these are the authors and their books that I love, that I wanna read everything that they write, and I've given multiple of their books five stars. And these are my recommendations for Christian romance authors. So I'll write them all down below with their books. And some of these will not be new to you. Some of them are new this year, which is exciting. And basically this is a Christian romance author recommendation video as well. So my number one top favorite Christian romance author who is still publishing books today because some of them have stopped for whatever reason and it makes me so sad but they're still a favorite but this author is still writing and I love her books and I highly recommend her as an author if you haven't read Christian Romance. So good. You already know it's Becky Wade okay? Becky Wade? Come on like I she was one of the first Christian Romance authors that I ever read and I love her books. I love her writing style. I love her character development and her romance. The banter, okay? The cute moments, yes please. So if you have not ever read her before, these are the two that I recommend because these are, are five stars. I've given some of her books four stars, even three stars, okay? It's possible. But for the most part, she is a favorite just because of how amazing her five star books are. Okay, so this is a standalone. It's My Stubborn Heart. This is such a good book, okay? Especially if you're a single woman or if you were single for a long time before you got married. Such a good message. So you follow a single woman who really longs to be married and that's kind of the storyline is like, she is a Christian, ro ro <laughs> she's a Christian woman. She loves God, but she wants to be married and she doesn't know why she's not. She's like, what's taking so long? And I relate, okay, because I too am a single Christian, <laughs> I'm a single woman, Christian woman, but I want to be married really badly. Like, I'm just going to straight up say it. I want to get married and I'm ready. Like, come on, anytime now. Thank you, God. Um, so this book, like just, she, she tapped into those feelings and those emotions so accurately. I have read this, I think, three or four times every single time I bawl my eyes out because I'm like there's hope for me <laughs> it's not too late okay I'm not too old I have said that like have I aged out of the system but no okay anything is possible you never know okay God sees your heart he sees my heart and I am trusting him even though it's so stinking hard anyways <laughs> that's not what this video is about but I'm just saying the faith content the romance the characters this is like a fully grumpy sunshine trope so yes um it's a little bit of a sports romance too because the guy's a hockey player former hockey player and they both are like working on her aunt or grandma grandma i think her grandma's house i love that when like they're both like there's like a project they're working on and they have to work together but they were like strangers at the beginning but then they slowly become friends and she breaks down his walls and it's so cute so yeah stay with me though there's something about stay with me this book is such a comfort read for me. I The two times I've read this, I read it during such like a sucky time in life. And this book gave me peace and brought me comfort. And I will forever remember that. So that's why I love this book so much. It's also very funny, very cute. And for this one, you follow a woman who is like a Christian writer and speaker. And she is like in women's ministry. And she's also addicted to drugs. So, uh-oh, I'm addicted to painkillers. She's like kind of hiding that. So that's kind of her thing. Like, you know, she has to keep up this image, but she also is like secretly taking these drugs. So that's not great. And then she <laughs> stumbles across this house. She gets into it. She sleeps in the bed. He comes home. He's like, what are you doing in my bed? Okay, literally that's the opening scene. Okay, and he is like, this again? is a bit of a grumpy sunshine, maybe a little bit opposites attract. I don't know. She writes the grumpy sunshine opposites attract so well. I feel like that's her signature trope and I love it. 
okay? She's so good at it. And again, amazing character development, faith content, stinking cute romance, like the groceries. You already know. If you've read this book, the groceries, <laughs> so funny. And then there's an amazing like little mystery and forgiveness thread through this book, which I love. So highly recommend. This is the start of a trilogy. And they're companion trilogies, but they do need to be re read in order. So read this book first and then continue the trilogy because they're all five stars as well. But this book in particular, highly recommend. Okay, next. Honestly, if she was still publishing books, she would be a contender against Becky Wade because I love her books so much. And if you already know, it's Tammy L. Gray. Tammy L. Gray's writing and her characters and her storylines are top tier. If you have not read these books, trust me, Christian romance, the ultimate recommendations. Okay, I'm just saying. My Hope Next Door, I don't know what it is about this book, but I relate so hard to it, mainly to the guy, which is so exciting. Like, that's why he's like my top book boyfriend of all time. Okay, Asher, thank you. Yes, please. God, sign me up, please. Okay, seriously. So you follow this woman who became a Christian as an adult, but she grew up in this small town as a teenager and she did some reckless things and she has a lot of regrets. We relate, okay? And then she becomes a Christian and she's like really trying to stay true to her faith and it's so inspiring. Her parents are not Christians and they're like really grumpy and grouchy. Like they're, it's not a great place. She has to go home to take care of her mom because she has issues. So she's home. They happen to live next door to this guy named Asher. He is the pastor's son of this town, but he is frustrated with the church and he had some bad experiences with the church. So he isn't going to church right now, but he sees her and he's like, Hey, we went to high school together. Let's chat. And so they're chatting. Truly, they become friends. It is the cutest friendship ever. And then there's romance. And I'm telling you, the way it was written, I feel like every scene was absolutely perfect in this book. I can't, I can't say how good it is enough. Like, truly read it. But also, this stinking book, <laughs> Love and a Little White Lie, I cannot believe this is so good as well. What was that? Okay, this house makes random noises and it feels like there's like something here, like, but nothing ever has happened. But the sounds this house makes, it's like, it's truly like there's something in the house. We pray every single night, I'm just saying. <laughs> we pray every night for that protection. Anyways, love and a little white lie. Okay, <sighs> I'm very hyped. This book, you follow an atheist girl who is down on her luck, doesn't know what's, what's going on. Her aunt gets her a job at a church and she's like, sure, who cares? I'm a good secretary, I'll, I will help. But I don't believe what you believe, so that's fine. Then she sees a super cute worship leader and she's like, oh, hello. So they start doing a little chat, okay? So there's that. Then she's living on her aunt's property but there's also a father and son that live on the property or like live near it or like basically the handyman of the property maintenance. They're also chatting. So it is a little bit of a love triangle, but I was so here for it. I had no idea. Okay. Because I loved both guys. I did. I mean, the first guy's definitely my type. And I'm like, although to be honest, musicians don't do it for me, but this guy sounded great. Okay. And that's the story. You, you, you see her, you see her faith journey. You see her relationship with these guys and her aunt and her mom and all the things. It's so cute. Again, every single scene was perfect. This book is flawless. Okay. Next an OG that is like an OG favorite Francine Rivers. Okay. She publishes real slow and who even knows if there's another book coming. I don't know. What was her last book? The lady's mine. That was like, what, three years ago now? Where are the books, girl? But I mean, she writes really big books and tackles big, intense topics. So fair enough. Um, Redeeming Love. Wow. <sighs> Historical. 
historical, but I loved it because it's about the romance though. As long as the historical fiction centers around romance, I'm here for it. But truly, her faith journey, like, wow. This is like about a prostitute and she gets married and she resists it. She's like, I'm not good enough for this. All I know is prostitution, super intense, and I loved it. I truly loved it. I've never felt God's love so clearly to me than in this book. So Bridge to Haven, another good one. And it's similar to Redeeming Love, similar themes, I guess you could say, because this girl is in Hollywood and she gets into really dark stuff and she has to be redeemed from it. And there's romance, of course. And it is so stinking cute. The guy in here, another book boyfriend. Like, what's his name? Joshua? What a name. Okay, if your name's Joshua, great name. I like the name Joshua, because short for Josh. I just, that whole combination, love it. Anyways, highly recommend. Very intense. Triggers in this book and in Redeeming Love. So check him out. But honestly, I, I love this book captivated and then the masterpiece is another all-time favorite the spiritual warfare in this book intense okay and i really liked this relationship it was not traditional or what's the st it, it wasn't stereotypical like the characters had to go through really major personal renewal and growth before romance could happen but it was written so well that i wasn't like yearning for the romance i more so like loved seeing these characters grow and then the romance was like a cherry on top so next rachel fordham okay i love her truly guys like if you like historical romance please read her books they're good okay some of them have more faith content than others but just in general amazing christian historical romance and highly recommend my first ever book by her was where the road bends this has very similar vibes to Redeeming Love, hence why I loved it. Like, I, it still probably stands as my favorite book by her because of the themes in it, because it went so intense. She handled it so well. I loved the characters and how they communicated. Her thing is good communication. And thank you so much. Like, she handles communication so well. She uses conflict so intentionally, I feel like. And it makes the characters, like, just better because they talk through the conflict and it's just it's just so great so highly recommend this one um it's very historical though okay just saying um then the letter tree stinking cute romance okay barely any faith content basically no faith content but the romance super cute and this was lighter on the historicalness of it so highly recommend romeo and <laughs> romeo and juliet retelling amazing and then most recent beyond ivy walls a little bit more faith content beauty and the beast vibes grumpy sunshine super cute and just the most pleasant cute read ever so she's definitely an all-time favorite i will follow her forever okay i love her books so highly recommend okay this author only has two books but she is coming out with a third one in September. Very excited. And I, it, you can only pre-order the ebook right now in Canada anyways. So I really, I want the physical book. So I'm going to try to find a way to get that. Also, do I look kind of like small in this corner? It's cause like, usually I'm sitting on a stool today. I just wanted to sit on the floor. So I hope this is okay. Maybe I'll tilt it down, but then you can see the books. How do you feel about this? It's fine. Okay. Melissa Coslin, you guys, Melissa Coslin. So her writing style is so unique. I love her writing, first of all. Second, the romance though. The romance, if you like really deep, intense emotions from the characters for each other, amazing, okay? So Dangerous Beauty is about human trafficking, super intense, okay, major but so good. Loved this. Then she has another book called Never Miss. Don't own it yet, but someday. Okay. It's on my Amazon wish list. It was so fascinating. So well done. It's about a former CIA sniper. She is from a family of snipers who do like hits for people. They're not really good people. There is an Ebola virus conspiracy and she and this guy 
take it down. And it was so entertaining, such good romance. And there's faith content in these books, like, truly. Check them out. Very entertaining. Love the writing style once again. I will read anything this author writes. I love her. Recent favorite author from this year, which I'm so excited about, is Lynn H. Blackburn. Because this is romantic suspense that has more romantic than suspense. My favorite thing, okay? I had no idea, but her writing style is so good, so fast paced, love the way she writes character dynamics. Her friend groups and family groups, top tier, so good. And the romance though. And this is my favorite book by her. Um, I tab this sucker up. Favorite thing. Um, so this is technically book two. The first book is called Unknown Threat. Highly recommend that one. Okay, this whole uh, Defend and Protect trilogy, highly recommend. Really like this one. The, her first trilogy is the Dive Team Investigations, something like that. I think only one book in that trilogy was five stars, the rest were four. But two books in this series were five stars. So I'd recommend starting with this series and then going back to read her Dive Team, but whatever you want to do. I'm going to read every single one of her books for the rest of time because this is exactly what I want to read in Romantic Suspense. So I love it. Almost done, guys. So next up is Nicole Deese. Nicole Deese, I feel like, is an OG. She also was like an early discovery for me. And the first book I read by her was Before I Called You Mine. And this is a standalone. And it is so sweet. Again, single woman. But her dream is actually to be a mom more than to be married. So she prays about it and she decides to adopt. Of course, she wants to be married, but she's like, but I want to be a mom more and I feel called to it. So I'm just going to go for it. Then she meets a guy. She meets a guy. She is so torn. And you follow that journey for her to figure out like, do I pursue this guy or do I pursue the adoption? I can't do both. And I was so torn with her. And it was like such a well-written story because the guy was so cute like josh joshua like come on how many cute joshua's are there in the world the faith content the romance the d the depth so good highly recommend okay but then all that it takes is another favorite this is technically book two in a du duology you can read them out of order but the premise or the setup of this book won't quite make sense unless you read the first book but i'm just saying this is definitely my favorite I think I give it the first book four stars, but this is five stars because like it is a pastor romance and this woman has a son and she's got trauma and he's a pastor and they're figuring it out. And the way that this relationship was written, it was so mature and I could just see it being real. It felt real. The writing was so good in this one. Super cute romance, super strong message great faith, all the things. Love this book. Okay, that is everything. I did look at some other books that I pulled, but technically, because I haven't read enough of their books and given them five stars, they can't, they don't fit in this category. So I'm going to leave it at that. That was a lot of books. I talked a lot. I'm losing my voice, but I was so excited to share these books with you. I'm going to write them all down below. I'll link my playlist of Christian book recommendations on my channel. I have different playlists for all of my videos and I have one for Christian recommendations and just for general book recommendations. So I'll link both the playlists down below. They're slightly different, but there is some overlap as well. So look through those playlists. I have recommended all of the best Christian romance that I've read basically in one of those videos. So check them out. But for now, this is my updated list of my favorite Christian authors right now and yeah that was so fun so thank you for watching you guys and i will see you in my next video bye see what are these sounds you probably can't hear them but i can hear them